Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 72 of the current crisis and today again it's all about the phases as people today move into a new phase in many parts of the country. Specifically here in Madrid we're moving into phase one and many places around the country moving into phase two and there were also some big announcements over the last couple of days about the tourist season here in Spain but I'll tell you about that in just a tick. Firstly a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments there, lots of debate happening again as usual. A big thanks to all of the people that decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. A a big thanks to the people that bought merchandise and again a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon for your support there. Thank you very much for that. Now, as I said, it's about phases and the tourism here in Spain. And firstly, we're going to have a look at the announcement that the Prime Minister made a couple of days ago. And he said that Spain awaits you. Sanchez invites the international tourists to come from July. The president of the government has announced that the tourist season will start at the end of June for national visitors. And from July, foreigners will be allowed to enter with guarantees. The president of the government, Pedro Sánchez, has announced that there will be a tourist season this summer. So he has called on the Spanish and foreign tourists to plan their vacations with the aim of reactivating the tourist sector, one of the hardest hit by the crisis. So there you go. There is going to be some tourism in Spain, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as just jumping on a plane and coming to Spain this summer. I think that there are going to be some restrictions, although you will be able to book holidays. You won't be able to travel freely around the country. At least in my opinion, I don't think that's going to be the case because remember that Spain is going through different phases of this de-escalation. So it's still going to be a little bit complicated this summer, I think. And we can see here that the Spanish government is trying to negotiate the creation of tourist corridors that would function bilaterally with neighbours such as Portugal. So again, tourism in Spain this year, I think, will depend on these tourist corridors and whether the governments can come to some type of agreement to allow tourists to enter through these tourist corridors as we have just seen. Now, the tourism minister, Ms. Morotto, reiterated Sanchez's words by saying that foreign tourists will be able to come to Spain in July without quarantine. She said that the entry of tourists to Spain will be a fact in July, once the state of alarm and the quarantine of foreign visitors conclude. Now, as I said before, will tourism be as normal here in Spain this summer? I have my doubts. And reading another quote from what the prime minister said, he said that Spain needs tourism and security in origin and destination. We will guarantee that tourists do not run any risk or bring it to our country. So again, tourists are going to be allowed to come in, but there's going to be conditions in place. And as we have seen over the last couple of weeks in the videos, beaches are going to have limited access, tourist areas are going to have limited access, so it's not going to be tourism as normal in Spain this year. Now Sanchez also reactivated the soccer league and asked Spaniards to plan their vacation. And this in turn led to hotel searches skyrocketing 142% after his announcement. The Prime Minister also invited yesterday all tourist establishments, bars and restaurants to prepare to resume their activity in a few days. Now I'm not sure if I'm the only one here, but I think Spain's getting a little bit ahead of itself here with these plans. And we can see that France has recently announced that it does not recommend booking holidays in Spain due to Sanchez's contradictory policy. The French Minister of Ecological Transition and Inclusion criticizes that our country announces the opening of borders, but that the restrictions on the entry of visitors by plane are maintained. So good to see that I'm not the only one who thinks that these policies are contradictory. So what's your opinion? Is Spain right? Is France right? Leave it in the comments section below. Now another article here related to British tourism here in Spain, and we can see that there will be a whole of 8.5 billion euros if Spain does not give certainties about the end of quarantine. Of the more than 80 million tourists that Spain receives each year, at least 18 million come from the UK and are now in danger due to the quarantines announced by Madrid and London. So again, it's not going to be as easy as just hopping on a plane and coming to Spain this year, as it's still not clear whether a lot of these restrictions are going to be able to be lifted. So if you are in the UK and you are planning to come to Spain on holiday this year, let us know what you're planning and whether you think that these restrictions will hamper your holidays here in Spain this year. Now Sanchez also announced that there will be autonomies that will come out of the state of alarm in coming days. And he said, that all of Spain will have come out of the restrictions in late June or early July if nothing goes wrong. So again, if nothing goes wrong. 
Now, as I said before, the whole of Spain is either in phase one or phase two as of today, and there have been a few changes. One of the main changes, as we can see here, is that the government has authorized walks in groups of up to 15 people, and complete families will be able to walk together throughout Spain, regardless of the phase in which your community is. Starting this Monday, the groups must be a maximum of 10 people in the places that are in phase one. Meanwhile, in those that have already managed to go to phase two, the maximum group of people who can have walks together will be 15. Despite the fact that with this new measure the health department equates walks with the use of terraces, the practice of sport remains individual. So there you go. If you are in phase two, you can walk with groups of up to 15 people. And if you're in phase one, groups of up to 10 people can go out for a walk together, but sport must be done individually. But the good news for families is that now the whole family can go out and walk together, whereas before that was limited to only one parent. So both parents weren't allowed to go out to walk with the children, but now they can. Now some more good news for people that are awaiting the minimum income, and it is that it arrives this week to the rescue of 850,000 families. The government measure aims to help 2.3 million people, and will cost 3 billion euros. So there we go, the minimum vital income available this week. So a lot of relief there for people that have been doing it tough over the last couple of months. Now many people are no doubt asking themselves how the government is going to pay for this minimum vital income. And many experts say, unsurprisingly, that Spain is likely to raise taxes in the wake of the crisis. The crisis has devastated the Spanish economy, leaving the public coffers with debt levels not seen since the beginning of last century. All indications suggest that the Spanish government will need to introduce new measures to get the economy back on track. The question is how? According to several experts, Spain may decide to increase taxes, cut social spending, or raise the retirement age. So there we go. For people like me, more tax, less social services, and I probably won't be able to retire until I'm 85. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from the last videos. First one here from Graham, he says, Stuart, I think Sanchez just waited until you had released today's video before making his announcement about tourists from July being allowed. You might need to have a word with him so he feeds the info to you first, LOL. Yeah, Graham, you're right. That's one of these contradictory things that are going on here in Spain at the moment. The mayor of Madrid announces that international tourism is not gonna come back to Madrid until 2021. And the prime minister comes out the next day and says that he wants international tourism back as early as July. And you're right, it's a little bit confusing. You read one thing and somebody says another thing. But as far as I understand, and like I said before, I don't think tourism is gonna get back to normal. I think the tourism that Sanchez is trying to promote are these international corridors where people from Portugal, France, Germany, etc., can come to Spain with guaranteed safety and go to specific places. I don't think you're gonna be able to travel throughout the country freely, or at least that's what I believe at this stage. But again, you never know what's gonna be said today. It could be something completely different. But what I understand is that, that there's gonna be these safe travel corridors, whatever that means. We'll have to wait and see. One here from James. Earth their money received this morning. It wasn't even half my normal wage. As far as I know, it's meant to be a payment for the 15th of April to the 15th of May. It doesn't even cover my rent. So don't keep your hopes up, people. Yeah, so there we go. James got his money, but it wasn't what he was expecting and it's not even enough to cover his rent and that unfortunately is the reality for a lot of people that have been put into a situation of furlough or a temporary redundancy plan by their companies the money's been late getting through and uh, as we see just not enough so sorry to hear that James and hopefully you'll be able to get back to your regular activity as soon as possible one here from Toddy don't forget Ubuda. It's an absolute must visit if you go to Jaén, the same as Porcuna, Lenares, or many other places with rock art. Yeah, thanks, Toddy, for the comment. I do plan to visit Jaén in the future. As I said the other day in the video, it's one of these places on my list of places to visit here in Spain, but it's one of many, many places. And that's one of the great things about Spain is that there's just so many places to visit. You can go to these small cities in places like Jaén, you can go to the villages, and there's always something interesting to see or do. But again, I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to travel again here in Spain considering that we are in these phases at the moment so it's a bit complicated but as soon as I can I'll start to hit the road. One here from Ed. Hi Stuart, really enjoyed your updates. I'm a UK based teacher of languages and would love to know what is happening in Spain regarding schools. Are they open? 
How has teaching been delivered to students? In England, there is currently a lot of confusion over reopening schools, and I can't see many students being back in school this year. Any insight into what the Spanish experience for kids, parents, and teachers would be really useful? Cheers. Yeah, good question. Education is very, very complicated at the moment. There is talk of some schools opening up for parents that need to go back to work. They are talking about opening up schools and there is a plan in place for a new look type of school come September. I read somewhere that the standard classroom is going to have to change and that schools are going to need to open up all of the areas on premises in order to maintain the distance between students. Kids' recess times are going to change. They're also talking about kids not being allowed to play sport at recess as well. So there's going to be lots and lots of changes in the system. As far as what's been happening over the last couple of months, it depends what type of school your kid goes to. If he goes to a private school, it's probably business as normal. If he goes to one of these concertados, which is basically a private school, it's been more or less business as usual online. But the state school system, at least my experience with the state school system, has been a bit slow to adapt to the new situation and it's going to be a challenge come September. One here from Winston. Hi Stuart, what do you think about Australia standing up to China's bullying? I support Australia and the five eyes. By the way, I have a lot of Aussie friends who live in Earls Court, London. Yeah, thanks for that Winston. I didn't know that Earls Court was still the place for Aussies in London. I thought that was back in the day of Barry McKenzie and through the 80s and maybe the 90s even. I didn't know it was still such a hub for Aussies in London. Regarding the way that Australia stood up to China, well, I think that's what they needed to do. As we've seen, China has been a little bit opaque over the last few months regarding this situation that we're in now and Australia decided to ask them for some type of investigation which led to China bullying Australia but lots of other countries decided to support Australia and hopefully we'll get some answers over the next few months as to what actually happened in China but every day I see that China is cancelling contracts with Australia and putting tariffs on certain goods so I think the problems between the two countries are far from over unfortunately. One here from Javier I think the problem is not the government but the system. Spain has a huge overhead in its public sector 17 local parliaments, public local TVs, too many town halls, deputations, senate and other public entities. Entitled people who do not produce anything and although Spain's private sector has been doing well in the last few years, we are not able to maintain all this. Sadly, they always say public sector cuts means freezing pensions and cutting back on healthcare, which basically is BS. The BCE is buying our sovereign debt or otherwise Spain would not be able to finance this huge public sector, but all the parties are made up of people who come from the public sector. Yeah, Javier, I couldn't agree with you more. Spain has an incredibly bloated public system. As you said, civil servants, 17 local parliaments, public TV stations, lots and lots of money being thrown away each month. And you're right, the private sector has been diminishing over the last few years. And how do you maintain a system with no private sector? I don't know how it works. Apparently, there are politicians in the government that know how this system works. It's been done in other countries. If you look at some of the countries in South America, you can see that model. And that's a model that some people think would be good for Spain. So we'll see how that pans out. One here from Steiner. Some idiots never show respect and do not use masks. Most use masks here around the Benidorm area. Yes, Steiner, the use of masks is a little bit controversial at the moment. A lot of people don't like wearing masks. They say that it hinders their breathing. I had to go the other day to buy something and to be honest, standing there for 30 minutes with a mask on in the heat was a terrible experience and I hope that this compulsory mask measure comes to an end as soon as possible. But that's just me. I've read the comments section. A lot of people seem to be in favor of using masks. A lot of people seem to be against using them. What's your opinion? Leave it in the comment section below to mask or not to mask. One here from Tim Stewart. For those of us now entering phase one, what changes? Yeah, Tim, well, to answer your questions, there's not a lot of changes. The biggest changes are, of course, that now you can get together in groups of up to 10 people. You can see friends, you can see family, you can go around to somebody's house if they invite you, which you couldn't do before. You can also go to an outdoor seating area of a bar or a restaurant. But again, capacity there is limited to 50%. So here in Madrid, it's going to be hard to get a table at a lot of places. And another change is that you can now go anywhere in the Madrid region. You don't have to stay inside your municipality so there's probably not going to be any roadblocks on the outskirts of your local area where the police would take pictures of your license plate to see whether you were a resident in that area or not. So for example, here in Madrid now, I can go anywhere in the Madrid community. 
I can go into the mountains to have a drink, I can go to a restaurant there if I can get a table, but again, we still can't do tourist activities unless they're organized. So those are some of the main changes. One here from Philip, phase one hasn't made a lot of difference as a lot of bars, restaurants, etc., are still staying closed as it's not worth their while opening with these restrictions in place. To my mind, they knew this when these phases were planned. Yeah, Philip, again, that's the big problem. A lot of places are just not gonna open in phase one because it's not worth their while to have only a terraced area or an outdoor seating area with 50% capacity and a lot of places are choosing not to do it. I think they're going to wait for phase two when people can go inside the restaurants and bars again but again there's going to be a limited capacity there as well. So if you're in phase two at the moment and you have seen the changes please tell us what they are in the comment section below so that we have something to look forward to. Now on that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do, but remember, keep the insults to a minimum. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.